7.9 million pounds of thrust. That's the power generated by SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster during its recent successful static fire test. A huge milestone for the company's ambitions to reach the Moon and Mars. However, there was a small issue with one of the Raptor engines during a subsequent launch attempt. Could this potentially complicate the company's next steps and even lead to a denial of a license by the FAA? Let's jump into the video and find out. Firstly, let's start with the basics. The Super Heavy Booster is one half of the company's Starship rocket system. It is a 230-foot-tall rocket powered by 33 Raptor engines, which are among the most advanced rocket engines in the world. The propellants used by these engines are liquid methane and liquid oxygen, and they prove more efficient and environmentally friendly than traditional rocket fuels like kerosene. The rocket recently went through a full-duration static fire test. SpaceX test-fired the booster's methane-fueled engines at their Starbase facility near Brownsville, Texas. The rocket's engines were fired, while the vehicle remained tethered to the ground during the test. By doing so, SpaceX was able to ensure that all systems were operational and collect valuable data on the rocket's performance. The tanks were not filled to the brim during the test, which is standard practice in rocket testing. This enables engineers to gradually increase the power of the engines and identify any potential issues prior to a full-scale launch. At 4.14 p.m. Eastern, the engines were ignited for approximately 6 to 7 seconds, generating approximately 7.9 million pounds of thrust at half power. The Super Heavy Booster will produce more than 16 million pounds of thrust during launch if all 33 engines are running at full throttle. While the Super Heavy Booster did not have the Starship upper stage attached for the test, the Starship itself has six Raptor engines to power itself into orbit after separating from the Super Heavy Booster a few minutes after liftoff. Elon Musk, SpaceX founder and CEO, tweeted minutes later that engineers turned off one of the Booster 33 engines just before ignition and another engine stopped itself. Musk confirmed that 31 engines fired overall, but also assured the public that it's still enough engines to reach orbit. The Starship upper stage, which was not on the Super Heavy booster for the test, could still achieve orbit if multiple engines failed on the first stage. One of the two non-igniting engines was manually disabled just before the static fire test, while the other experienced an automatic shutdown while attempting to ignite the remaining 31 Raptors. Despite these minor setbacks, the rocket achieved its goal and generated enough power to reach orbit, which is a remarkable achievement in and of itself. Interestingly, the recent static fire test also broke a record for the most rocket engines ever ignited on a single rocket. The 31 engines that fired together exceeded the previous record held by the Soviet N-1 moon rocket, which had 30 engines and flew on four failed missions from 1969 through 1972. The N-1 moon rocket was a bold project that aimed to outperform the American Apollo program, which had successfully landed astronauts on the moon in 1969. The N-1 was a massive rocket that stood over 100 meters tall, weighing over 2,700 metric tons. It was propelled by 30 NK-15 engines with a combined thrust of more than 50,000 kilonewtons. Despite the Soviet Union's best efforts, the N-1 program was plagued from the start with technical issues and setbacks. The rocket exploded seconds after liftoff during the first launch attempt in 1969 resulting in a catastrophic failure that destroyed the launch pad and surrounding infrastructure. Also, speaking of moon missions, NASA's Saturn V rocket that took mankind to the moon generated a maximum thrust of about 7.6 million pounds at liftoff, which was accomplished by the five F-1 rocket engines in the first stage of the rocket. In comparison, NASA's current heavy lift rocket, the Space Launch System, or SLS, which is designed to return astronauts to the moon, has a maximum thrust of about 8.8 .8 million pounds. This is achieved through the use of four RS-25 engines in the core stage and two solid rocket boosters attached to the rocket's sides. The recent test of the SpaceX Super Heavy Booster, on the other hand, showed the potential for much greater thrust. If all 33 Raptor engines had been running at full throttle during the test, the Super Heavy Booster would have generated more than 16 million pounds of thrust. This is nearly double the thrust of the Saturn V and the SLS rockets, making it the most powerful rocket test in history. To put this into context, 
The Super Heavy Booster's 16 million pounds of thrust is equivalent to the force exerted by approximately 85 Boeing 747 jumbo jets at takeoff. This immense power will be needed to lift the massive Starship spacecraft, which will carry up to 100 people and more than 100 tons of cargo to destinations beyond Earth's orbit, including Mars and the Moon. Now, you're probably worried about the state of the Starship's launch pad. The launch pad has to endure tremendous forces and heat generated by the 31 Raptor engines. To counteract these forces, SpaceX's Mechazilla, a sophisticated launch mount, clamped down the Starship spacecraft with 20 clamps to keep it stable during the launch. Mechazilla is a one-of-a-kind, stool-like structure that aids in the positioning of the Starship spacecraft during launch and is an essential component of the launch pad. This orbital launch mount has been designed to withstand the enormous forces and heat generated by the engines during the launch. Mechazilla, on the other hand, held the spacecraft in place, ensuring it remained stable during the launch. Despite this, the launch damaged SpaceX's Stage Zero Pro, a vital part of the launch pad. This structure, which supports the massive weight of the Starship spacecraft, has been scorched by the heat generated during the launch. The fact that SpaceX's only orbital-class Starship launch site survived the ordeal is likely enough for the company to consider the static fire a success. However, the two engines missing from the historic Starship static fire on February 9th have most likely complicated the company's next steps. SpaceX would most likely need to complete a full 33-engine test to be fully confident in Starship's ability to launch and fly a safe distance away from the launch site. Meanwhile, Starship can't fly until the Federal Aviation Administration approves a launch license. The FAA may be stingy enough to deny SpaceX a license if it does not have a perfect 33-engine static fire. The company and the public have been waiting for the orbital flight test for quite some time, and the FAA has yet to grant the license. Musk, on the other hand, has previously stated his confidence in obtaining the license soon. Also, Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer, said that assuming a good outcome of the test firing, the company could be in a position to attempt the first Starship orbital test flight in March. She added that the first flight test is going to be really exciting. It's going to happen in the next month or so, and that we will go for a test flight, and we will learn from the test flight, and we will do more test flights. The real goal, according to Shotwell, is to not blow up the launch pad. That is success. However, SpaceX has yet to announce whether it will try again in the future to ignite all 33 engines on the Super Heavy booster. Also, NASA has expressed its support for SpaceX's efforts in deep space exploration. NASA previously awarded SpaceX contracts to transport astronauts to and from the International Space Station using the Crew Dragon spacecraft marking the first time that the American astronauts had been launched from American soil since the space shuttle's retirement. NASA and SpaceX collaborated to develop the Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is outfitted with advanced systems for life support, navigation, and re-entry. In addition, NASA has collaborated with SpaceX to develop technologies that will allow humans to explore the Moon and Mars. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and watch these ones as well.